The title of tonight's message is Two Roads in Life. Two roads in life. There are just two roads in this life that will lead to eternity. And every man, woman, boy, and girl are traveling one of these two roads. Do you know which road you travel this day? If you are unsure, hopefully by the end of this message, you will understand which road you travel and where your life is going. Now, each road is different in size, in journey, and in destination. Jesus spoke of these two roads in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jesus identified each road as the broad way and the narrow way. The broad way leads to eternal damnation. The narrow way leads to eternal life. Jesus said entrance to the broad way is through a wide gate because everyone born into this world enters the wide gate onto the broad way. Psalm 51, verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. This broad way is a road that has been heavily traveled throughout time. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. To enter the wide gate, there are no limitations or restrictions. And the broad way is a road that is pleasant to the eye. It is a path of least resistance. The broad way is a road of selfishness and indulgence. A person travels this way to do as they please. In other words, devoting themselves to achieving personal goals and dreams, using all of their time, their energy, and their effort, satisfying their wants and their desires. Many love the fact that on the broad way, they can live just any way they choose, fulfilling every desire and lust of the flesh, giving no regard to consequences, no regard for lost souls, and no regard for their final destination at the end of the road. You see, on the broad way, the devil is there, deceiving people every step of the way. Multitudes on this road are so fixated on doing as they please, committing every sin they desire, that they give no thought to the broad way's final destination, eternal damnation. Nor do they consider just how close they may be to reaching that final destination. Down through the years, some have traveled this broad way knowing that the final destination would be eternal hellfire. But the devil would deceive them day after day after day, convincing them to keep on traveling, because someday down the, down the way they reason they'll get off the broad way. But what they fail to realize, no one is promised tomorrow. No one knows when they will come to the end of their journey on this road in life. How many traveling this broad way close their eyes in sleep, suddenly to awaken and lift up their eyes in hell? With scales of deceit over their eyes, they traveled this way, reaching their final destination 
without even realizing it. In eternity, all scales are removed, and people see clearly the air of their way. But in eternity, it's too late. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The broad way seems to be the way to go in life. However, the longer you travel this road, you begin to realize this journey, this road is not everything you expected it would be. For on the broad way, there are many dangers and pitfalls. There is no help or guidance on this road, no real love, no joy, no peace, and no power of deliverance. On this broad way, you are bound. Bound by sin, bound by oppression and despair, bound by restlessness and frustration, bound by addictions, by demonic spirits forcing you to do their bidding, even at the expense of your own welfare. Giving up in despair and hopelessness, some decide that the only way off the broad way is suicide. They believe it's the only remedy, but suicide is no remedy. Suicide will just usher that person to their final destination sooner than expected. Romans chapter 7, verses 24 and 25. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. God sent Jesus into the world to provide an escape, an exit off this broad way. However, to travel the narrow way leading to heaven, a person must first enter the straight gate. The straight gate is in the form of a cross. Now, to enter the straight gate, one must humble themselves with godly, sorrowful repentance. In other words, they are sorry for their sins as God is sorry they committed them. And don't think that you will enter this straight gate by simply joining a church or being baptized in water, nor will good works and charitable deeds gain you entrance through the straight gate. No. For Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Only through divine blood can a person receive this born again experience. The power in the blood of Jesus will wash away your sins and make you holy and brand new. It is a spiritual rebirth. It is the miracle of salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. No longer are you traveling that old broad way. Now you have gained access to the new and living way. Through the ages, unfortunately, not many have been willing to walk the narrow way to heaven. For this walk requires sacrifice and discipline. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So to start the journey, self must be denied. But most people refuse to deny self completely. Therefore, they refuse to walk this narrow way. Now God says in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. This way to heaven 
is so narrow because a person must live free of all sin. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 and 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. In the Old Testament, hundreds of years before Jesus came to earth, the Holy Spirit revealed to the prophet Isaiah the narrow way that Jesus would make for the human race. Isaiah chapter 35, verse 8. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. Isaiah received the prophecy. Jesus came and fulfilled it. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Christ. He came on the scene and surveyed the narrow way. Then Jesus came. He followed, built the highway, and paved it with his divine blood. This is a divine blood highway, and that is why no sin and no uncleanness can step foot on it. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Only the holy feet of a holy life can walk the narrow way. The narrow way is a road of divine love and all divine faith needed. Peter said, this way is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Paul said in Philippians that on this narrow way through life's journey, all needs are supplied through Christ Jesus. All needs, spiritual, physical, and financial. And all who walk the narrow way are provided the opportunity to have a personal guide lead them through the whole journey. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, Jesus speaking, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The person of the Holy Ghost has come to live and dwell inside of you. And Jesus said, along this journey of the narrow way, he will be your guide, he will be your teacher, he will be your comforter. And the Holy Ghost is a willing and able guide, for he has traveled the narrow way hundreds and thousands of times over since the day of Pentecost helping to guide multitudes and multitudes to their final destination in heaven. The Holy Ghost knows this way so well that no matter how dark your path becomes in life, he will guide you and see you through on this narrow way without one misstep. Jesus declared that it is necessary for the Holy Ghost to come and be your guide. Now this shows that the journey along this way can and will be difficult. So often through the years, people have started out on the narrow way, ignorant and naive to the price that one must pay to travel this way. Therefore, they feel no need for the Holy Ghost as a guide. So they start out on their own, traveling this path. And when the trials and tribulations come, well, they're left stranded, without guidance, without power, and without comfort. And that is when so many become offended at the narrow way, and they turn back. But on the narrow way, there are no detours, no shortcuts. On this road, you will be led into deep valleys and up high mountains. On this road, you will be led straight 
into the fiery furnace of persecutions. And it's there that your love and faith will be tried and tested. However, Jesus will meet you as the fourth man in that fiery furnace. And like Job, you can declare, He knoweth the way that I take, and when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. By divine faith, know, always know that the narrow way which leads into the fiery furnace always provides an exit. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. On the narrow road you are provided all the divine grace for every infirmity, all the divine strength for every weakness. On the narrow way, the power of Christ will sustain you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. As you travel the narrow way, praying, fasting, studying the Word of God, you will grow stronger and stronger in the grace of God until you are able to travel each step on this path through life's journey, just as Jesus did. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. In this final hour, the narrow way is leading to all nations. To win the lost at any cost. To finish the work Jesus left undone here on earth. There are many souls God has marked around the world for us to win. There are multitudes that are deceived, thinking the path they travel is the right way. Believing the idol God they worship, the heathen religion that they embrace will one day lead them through the gates of heaven. But the truth says, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That name is Jesus. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. For no man can come unto the Father but by him. In Mark chapter 8, verses 36 and 37, Jesus asks questions of all those who are traveling the broad way. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Friend, watching by way of television, listening by way of radio, if you realize now that you are one traveling the broad way, now is the time to turn back. Now is the time to get off that road while you can. For Jesus Christ came into this world gave his life at Calvary to provide you an exit off this path leading to destruction. Take the exit before it's too late. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't be like others deceived into thinking that somewhere down the road in life they'll take the next exit. No, remember, you don't have power to know what lies ahead on tomorrow. You may not have another opportunity to exit this broad way. Without warning, you could reach your final destination. For around the next bend in life, the road could be out for you, 
and you would plunge into eternal damnation. But today is your opportunity to exit the broad way. Today is your opportunity to gain entrance through the straight gate on the narrow way leading to eternal life. Pray this prayer with me right now. This is the sinner's prayer. In this congregation, most of you don't need to say it, but you who are watching by way of television, listening by way of radio, take this opportunity. It could be your last. Say, O oh God, oh God, save my soul. Save my soul. I, want I want off this broad way. Forgive me of all of my sins. I humbly bow at the straight gate. Forgive me, Lord. I will serve you the rest of my life. And I believe the power in the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins, all of my sins. Say, come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. And amen. And if you meant that prayer, you've entered that straight gate. You've gained access to the narrow way. You pray, you fast, you live in the Word, and you will grow stronger in God's grace. And now you have the opportunity, the privilege on the narrow way to receive healing for your body. When Christ died on the cross, it was a twofold atonement. Not only salvation for the soul, but healing for the body. In James chapter 5, it says, The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and God shall raise them up. And Jesus said in Mark's gospel, the 16th chapter, A believer would lay hands on the sick, and they would recover. I'm the Lord's believer. And you who are sick and afflicted, watching by way of television, listening by way of radio, if you're watching by way of television, put your hand on the screen as a form of laying on of hands. You listening by way of radio, put your hand on the listening device. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring the sick and afflicted to you, those with a great need in their life, a great bondage that must be broken. Lay a healing hand upon each one. In the holy blood name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. Let your blood power flow. Lord, deliver, set them free. Make them whole from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. And Lord, make them a witness on this narrow way, a witness for you in this final hour. In the blood name of Jesus, I pray, and amen. Friend, watch every sign of improvement. Give God the honor, the praise, and the glory. And write, email us, contact us, let us know what God has done for you.